The Senator from Vermont. Mr. President, you know Vermonters are frustrated. They're angry. They've seen the Congress unwilling, unable to do its job, keep the uh, government running. They've seen the fact that we've passed, we've passed the budgets, we've passed a continuing resolution here in the Senate, and a small group in the House of Representatives, a small group of Republicans say, no, it, we have to have everything we want or nothing. And that's why we see here in Washington, museums, national monuments barricaded. But it's more than just that, Mr. President. This morning in the Judiciary Committee, we heard from the director of the National Security Agency that as each day goes by, the impact and jeopardy of a shutdown to the safety and security of this country will increase. And that's true. And the true toll of this needless exercise is just beginning to be felt. Some, some decry federal spending as though it's some kind of a communicable disease. But millions of American families, Republicans, Democrats, independents, rely on government-supported programs that provide the lifeline to keep them going. Key nutrition programs like the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. My state, that supports 100,000 Vermonters. Another 1,600 children and families benefit from Head Start. They're the ones who are going to create and run our jobs in the next generation. More than 117,000 seniors are on Medicare. 200,000 Vermonters in, in Medicaid. They don't know how long this is going to continue, but the short shutdown is hurting in other areas too. Buyers hoping to purchase a home with a loan from the Federal Housing Administration are being turned away. Can you imagine that ripple effect? when real estate is finally starting to pick back up. And what they're saying is, oh, the economy, we, have, we worry about the economy, they're trying to kill the economy by not letting Federal Housing Administration work. In Vermont, 450 technicians in the National Guard were furloughed Jesse, another 100 released from active orders. That the financial effect, of course, but the national security effects are amazing. In Vermont, we have a lot of agriculture. There's no one in the field or in the office at the Department of Agriculture. 200 USDA workers who, in, especially this time of year, are there to help Vermonters. They've been forced to close up shop as a result of the shutdown. WIC, the supplemental food program for pregnant women and young children, is 100% federally funded. But there's no only two weeks of funding available in Vermont for the nearly 16,000 participants of the state. Do we say in two weeks, sorry child, or sorry pregnant woman, we can't feed you. Can you just wait until we get our act together? But well, we're eating very well. We're eating very well, but could you go without food for a few weeks because we have a few more press conferences and a few more photo ops? What will happen to them? Our Republican colleagues in the House won't say. They apparently don't care. We heard from one office in Vermont, Rural Edge. They're building more affordable housing in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. The time has come for them to pay the contractor. The money is there, but nobody's at the USDA office to authorize the payment. Work is likely to stop. People are apt to be laid off. Winter is going to come, and that time to construct this affordable housing is lost. Federal agencies operate in 50 states. We know that. There's 40 of them in Vermont, from the Department of Homeland Security, the Postal Service, the Veterans Administration, Department of Defense, Department of Agriculture, Department of Justice. That's 7,000 people in my little state. Nearly 1,000 of them reported to work on Tuesday to receive a furlough notice. They have families. They have mortgages. They have payments. They have medical expenses. And suddenly we said, oh, I'm sorry. We." People here, the Republicans in the House, representatives of a small segment of them, are saying, we're making points for our supporters, so tough for you. Don't, you're not going to find an acceptable way to pay your bills. We, but we want you to pay your bills. We're just not going to pay ours. Failing to fund the government doesn't simply mean federal workers are furloughed. No, revenue streams for the federal government dry up. 
Department of Education, nobody's there to collect on defaulted student loans. Department of Justice, and civil fraud investigations, litigation, false claims act, fraud cases, they bring a lot of money to the uh, government, they're on hold. We can go back and forth. But this ping-ponging and continuing resolution, now we're told, oh, well, we'll do a bit-by-bit, bit, agency by agency. Well, oh, come on. They really cared about having the government going and pass the appropriations bills, go to, uh, let's go to conference, let's know that we can do it without being filibustered here by some of their same supporters, go to conference and vote them up or down. Then you'd fund the National Park Service, Environmental Protection Agency, Forest Service, and others. There is a clear path forward. We open the government, and then pass and conference appropriation bills in regular order. On the Treasury, the Federal Judiciary, District of Columbia, and so on. The Democrats in the Senate pass a continuing resolution and fund all federal agencies. They give us time to consider things for the next six weeks. A handful of partisans in the House of Representatives say, no, we can't do it. But we're elected to make decisions here, not to do slogans. This Vermonter, like so many others, is sick and tired of the politics as usual. Let's come to the table. Let's be grown-ups. Let's be grown-ups and do what we said we ran for office to do. And I'd ask consent my full statement be made part of the record. Without objection.